the lazy man says, There's a lion outside. I shall be slain in the streets. My name's Arthur and I thank you for joining me as we consider these words of Solomon from Proverbs chapter 22 verse 13. There's a lion outside. I shall be slain in the streets. Fear is one of the great things that stops us doing things because we're afraid of being hurt. But this proverb says it's just an excuse to be lazy, not to engage in the things that you should do. And I immediately think of some examples. Jesus knew he would be crucified if he went up to Jerusalem. But he also knew it was God's command to go up to Jerusalem as a Jew three times a year for the major feasts of the Lord. He was going to keep the Lord's instructions, even though he knew it was dangerous for him. He took some precautions. He didn't necessarily go up with the crowd in a way that could be anticipated by his enemies. And when he was there, he didn't sleep in the city where he could be tracked down and detained spent some nights out of town with friends, other nights slept in the Garden of Gethsemane on the Mount of Olives. But he didn't balk from going to the place which was his right, his privilege and his responsibility. And when he was there, he didn't shirk from doing the task that the Lord had given him to do. Every day he stood in the temple courtyard speaking to the people not busily condemning the authorities, but teaching the people that which was right. But they condemned themselves. His enemies came up to try and find fault with him, to offside him. He was ready to give them an answer. Should we pay taxes to Caesar? And Jesus said, well, show me the coin. Whose image is on it? Give to God the things that are God's and to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and many other tests that they orchestrated for him, the impossible questions that they had debated for centuries, he was able to answer them in a sentence. The lazy man, the scripture says, says there's a lion outside. I shall be slain in the streets. Some 20 years later, Paul was placed in the same situation. He'd been brought up in Jerusalem. It was his hometown, and he also had a very strong desire to be present at the time of the feast. He wasn't able to be there three times a year. In fact, he wasn't able to make it every year. But every few years, he wanted to be there at least. And so he was determined to go to Jerusalem to worship the Lord. He also took precautions against stirring up trouble and attracting attention to himself. And he also knew that there was an enemy there who was waiting for him and would attack him. For this had been revealed by the Lord to many of the Lord's people and they shared this knowledge with Paul. And they said to him, don't go, you'll be arrested, you'll be killed. But Paul's attitude was, I must go. He determined before the Lord that this was what he was to do. He was not going to be frightened off by the enemy. There's a lion outside. I must go up to Jerusalem for the feast and deliver this gift that the saints in Macedonia and Archaia have prepared. And so he went and the Lord organized for him to be rescued by the Romans from being mugged to death by the Jews. He had in fact been saved from death many times by the Lord, even resuscitated on one occasion. And he didn't have a death wish, for when there was a riot in Ephesus, the believers urged him not to go and make a public defence, and he took their advice. He fled the town instead. We can come to a much closer period. A hundred, 150 years ago, many people had the vision of missionary service and went from England to Africa. And They knew that they would die in Africa. So 
they packed their goods in a coffin to take with them. The main cause of death was dengue fever and cholera and other diseases that they had no defence against and killed many of them within six months of arriving. But still they went, that in that six months they might share the gospel of the Lord Jesus. They were not going to be lazy and put off from the task that God had put in their hearts. There's a lion outside. I shall be slain in the streets. No, that's just an excuse. And we need to be bold in the Lord to do the things that he has given us to do. Now, again, taking whatever precautions are necessary, for that was an earlier proverb. A prudent man foresees evil and hides himself, but the simple pass by and are punished. We don't know what will happen. Wherever we go, there are risks. And so we take care, occupational health and safety, take care to avoid known dangers. But we should not stop doing the things that God has given us to do. I think of Gideon, the Midianites, had been coming year by year, hordes of them across the Jordan River, into the land of Israel, where they stole the crops. They brought their animals and grazed all the land. When they came, the children of Israel went and had to hide in the hills. Now Gideon had secretly harvested some land, and he was seeking to thresh it. Well, normally you would thresh it by going to the top of a hill where the wind was blowing, and thresh it there. But no, there he would be seen by the Midianites. Would he not do it? No, he went into a den. He was threshing wheat in a wine press, where he could not be seen, and of course where the wind didn't blow. So he had to work so much harder threshing his grain in this place. But that's what he was doing. He didn't stop because there was an enemy outside. The enemy seeks to intimidate us, to make us stop doing the things that God would have us do, which we need to do. But Gideon persisted, making some adjustment because of the enemy, but persisted in threshing. And the angel of the Lord came to him, saying, The Lord is with you, O mighty man of valour. Because of his bravery, because of his commitment, just in thrashing wheat against the Midianites to take them on with an army of 300 men against an innumerable number. And he defeated them. And so the story of Gideon is one of those amazing stories. Blow your horn, Gideon. And the Midianites fled. We read in Hebrews chapter 2 where it's talking about the Lord bringing many sons to glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. And so inasmuch as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is, the devil, and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For indeed he does not give aid to angels, but he does give aid to the seed of Abraham. Therefore in all things he had to be made like his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to the devil, to make propitiation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to aid those who are tempted. Therefore we are to resist the devil and his intimidation through fear, and he will flee from us and submit ourselves to the will of God. Do not fear, for lo, I am with you even to the end of the age. As Jesus said, do not fear those who can destroy the body, but after that they have nothing more that they can do. Rather fear him who, having destroyed the body, can also destroy the soul in hell. The lazy man says, there's a lion outside, I shall be slain in the streets. Streets.